evening. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. My name is Jesse West. I am the Executive Director of Neighborhood Bike Works. Welcome to Neighborhood Bike Works Virtual Fundraiser. We're so glad that you guys could join us tonight. Tonight, we have some exciting content for you all. You will hear from a couple of our NBW youth, as well as from our Director of Youth Programming. We have exciting program updates and a new Earn a Bike video to share. As part of this fundraiser, we are raffling three bicycles. You can bid on these bikes until midnight on Sunday. First up is the Janus Allegro A3. Our friends at VeloJohn have donated a Janus Allegro A3 to this fundraiser. If you wanna bid, click the link below the video or you can scan the QR code you see in the photo here. The winner will be able to select their size and color you will also be able to choose between a regular frame model and a step through model. If you don't know your size, that's not a problem. The mechanics at VeloJohn will help you to select your perfect size. This bike is valued at $479.95 and bids start as low as $10 for 10 chances. Up next, the Fuji Jari 1.7. You'll see the photo here says it's a Fuji Jari 1.5. Our friends at Fuji told us today that it is actually a newer model, a 1.7. So it's an even more exciting bike to bid on. This bike is ready for any road with fat tires, huge clearance, mounts for bottles and racks. It's a perfect gravel bike. With upgraded Shimano shifters and a rear derailleur, this versatile bike is valued at $1,449. Chances as low as $20 for 10 chances. You can scan the QR code in the photo, or you can click the link below the video. And last, but certainly not least, some of our NBW youth have been earning paychecks over the past month, using their wrenching skills to refurbish a GT Tolera vintage mountain bike, using the mechanical skills they learned in our program. This high quality 90s mountain bike has a 20 inch frame, 26 inch wheels and GT's signature triple triangle frame. Your donations to this raffle go directly towards supporting our youth, our youth programming. From our entry level kids in our earn a bike classes all the way through our advanced students in the watershed trailblazers program. All MBW youth participants benefit from you bidding on this classic mountain bike. This bike is priceless, but you can buy chances by clicking the link below or by scanning the QR code. $5 for just 10 chances. You can bid on all three bikes through the weekend and winners will be announced on Monday, March 29th. We also have some amazing silent auction packages. We have six, six packages available. There are two bike gear packages, a local eats package that features lots of MBW staff favorites, a Philadelphia history and culture package featuring performances from some wonderful Philadelphia theater companies and an exclusive, not available to the general public, behind the scenes tour of Carpenter Hall. Very cool stuff. A city and suburbs package, which features amazing venues and live performances at uh, sites in Philadelphia and in the suburbs. And finally, a Philadelphia Flyers package featuring flyers tickets and tons of flyers gear. There's a little something for everyone and there's a link to bid below or you can scan the QR code to my left. You can bid until eight o'clock tonight on those packages. At this time, I would like to thank our two event sponsors, Cozen O'Connor and Loretta Witt Holmes of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Fox and Roach Realtors. Their generous support has made tonight's event possible. Thomas P. Witt of Cozen O'Connor would also like to welcome you to tonight's event. So I'll pass it over to Tom. Thank you, Jesse. I'm Tom Witt from Cozen O'Connor and I also have the good fortune to be married to Loretta Witt of Loretta Witt Homes. Cozen O'Connor is delighted to sponsor this event. I think this is now the fourth consecutive uh, fundraiser that we've uh, uh, sponsored for Neighborhood Bike Works. And we're proud to do that because of the wonderful work that Neighborhood Bike Works does for our children. Um, we're also 
honored to be able to provide legal services to neighborhood bike works from time to time when requested. So I hope that everyone listening tonight will be absolutely as generous as possible. Thank you, Jesse. Back to me. Thank you, Tom. We're so grateful to have Cozen O'Connor sponsoring tonight's event. Now I'm excited to announce our matching gift opportunity. We have an anonymous donor who will be matching all donations that we get live during tonight's event, up to $5,000. All your donations to this matching challenge will be doubled tonight. How do you donate? Well, to my left, you'll see a QR code that you can scan with your phone's camera. You can also text NBW match, that's N B w m a t c h to 855-202-2100 you will see this in, you will see a link below the the video but you will also see this information scrolling below uh various speakers throughout the night so there are so many ways that you can give and to my left you'll also notice that there's a progress tracker we're at zero now but i don't stay there for long uh, you can click that, excuse me, <laughs> so that progress tracker will show you throughout the night and that will automatically tally in real time. How cool is that? So what do your dollars fund? I can tell you. $50 buys a lock, a helmet, and a patch kit for a youth program graduate. $100 funds a monthly group ride for youth and their families to explore Philadelphia's watershed trail. $150 gives an essential worker a bicycle to safely commute to work through our Bikes for Neighbors program. $250 pays for one youth council member to earn a paycheck during our holiday bike build. $600 sponsors the youth through one of our Earn a Bike programs. And $1,000 trains one youth for paid job opportunities at MBW. But donations of any amount will help us towards our goal. To get you all fired up about what we do, our Youth Programs Director, Mustafa Abdul-Rashid, is going to tell you a bit about youth programming, and then we'll hear from two of our NBW youth who will speak about their experiences and what an impact the organization has had on them. Mustafa returns to Neighborhood Bike Works last year as the Director of Youth Programs. After several years working in local bike shops, Mustafa returns to NBW an organization he knows well from his 10 years of employment here. He worked as a mechanic, an instructor, and a youth programs coordinator. He has breathed new life into our programming, even amid a global pandemic. But I'll let him tell you in his own words. Mustafa? Hello, and good evening, everyone. My name is Mustafa Abdul Rashid. I am the director of youth programs at Neighborhood Bike Works. I've been a part of the Bike Works family for about 17 years. Neighborhood Bike Works, or MBW for short, is a nonprofit organization that focuses on youth and cycling. That's not the official mission statement, but when I think of a couple words that embody MBW, youth and cycling comes to mind. I am proud to say I've worked with trained, mentored, or been a part of over a thousand youth lives at Neighborhood Bike Works. In fact, to take you down memory lane, I've started, um, I started working at Neighborhood Bike Works in 2002 and stopped working at Neighborhood Bike Works in 2014. I originally started working at Neighborhood Bike Works 2002, my senior year in high school. I was, um, I was, I went to West Philadelphia High the Automotive Academy, that's where my math teacher, Simon Hogger, who's the principal of the workshop school um, right now near um, 47th and Locust. Oh my God. Um, he got me involved in Neighborhood Bike Works. He noticed that I was good with working with my hands. Um, at that point in my life, I was an amateur boxer. And um, I had won a few championships. Um, uh, I had a few championships under my belt. And um, I, I, you know, I was thinking about turning, turning professional. Um, but my math teacher showed me another program that could challenge my passion of working with my hands and figuring out how small mechanics works. Plus, I love riding my bike everywhere. I grew up in West Philadelphia, uh, where 
I was where I jogged and rode my biker all around the city. When I was younger, or you, um, it wasn't programs or organizations like Neighborhood Bike Works that I can remember. This um, organization combined my passions and it and it um, and it helped me uh, pick up another one with working with you. As uh, Jesse said, I held a lot of different positions here in Neighborhood Bike Works. I started off as a in, in, as a as an assistant instructor to an instructor to a shop manager to the program coordinator. But uh, one one thing that all those positions had in common was the ability to work directly with the youth. Uh, most of whom look like me, that um, I tried to empower towards learning new skills and keeping them gen generally doing something positive and productive. It's, it's, been, it's been my passion and um, I'm continuing it. When I wasn't working at Neighborhood Bike Works for about six years, I started an LLC um, just to continue working with youth. Um, my determination um, just, for, just for the success of youth didn't stop even when I wasn't a Neighborhood Bike Works employee. Um, this is the same time while I, while I was working at a bike shop. Now that I'm the director of youth programs, leading the direction of the programs, um, um, I, want, I want to continue uh, to do like basically um, some of the signature programs that BikeWorks is known for. Like we have programming from Monday to Saturday, but indoors we're at half the capacity that we normally see due to the pandemic restrictions. Currently during the week, we have uh, two, two earn a bike classes going on. We have a Monday, Wednesday class and a Tuesday, Thursday class, right? Earn a bike is one of our entry level programs that's it's designed as a, um, it's designed as an introduction to bikes and mechanics. And, and plus like youth would get, um, the youth who complete the class leaves with a bike lock and a helmet. Then um, that was uh, Monday through, yeah, that's Monday through Thursday, but Friday, we, um, I meet with the youth council on Zoom and that's open to everyone who kind of completed a course or whatever, but that's the, the, um, the youth council is basically, um, they basically um, help, help, um, help with making decisions at the organization. What I kind of do is I, um, I kind of give them my, my ideas of what I would like to do with the program and give them a chance to kind of like pick holes in it or whatever, it just to kind of make sure we're, we're basically doing what they want to do as long as you know it's within our guidelines or whatever. And then um, Saturdays, we, uh, we have drop-in. Uh, drop-in is designed for any youth to, who's, who completed our basic program to still uh, be involved. As an example, if you are a graduate, like from our earn a bike program, you, you get a few hours a week to come down, earn more hours. Hours are uh, youth money at Neighborhood Bike Works. And, um, you know, you can, you can spend your hours on like whatever you want. You can like uh, get more bikes, you can get parts anything that we pretty much have in the building, instead of you, um, basically instead of you spending money, you just spend your time that you, that you, um, that you have down here, you know, or you also have the option to um, work on your own bike, work on your friend's bike, maybe your parents or whatever. But, um, but, but the youth are given the opportunity to use our tools, uh, being a positive, uh, being a positive um, space and continue to absorb the staff knowledge on bike repair and cycling. And um, I, I guess it's, it's getting warm now. So uh, we're about to start our monthly rides. Um, it's something that the youth council um, really kind of, I'm leaning on them to kind of say when they actually want to ride. Cause I, I kind of take, I'm, I try to take my ideas from them. We have like um, freedom riders and we have like a, a leadership class that's coming up, but most of our programming should be posted on the website. But um, here, at, here, at, here's, here at Neighborhood Bike Works, one of our main focuses is, the, is basically the youth experience. And I would like for you to hear from two different youths at Neighborhood Bike Works. Uh, first up 
is Keanu Salisbury. I wasn't into neighborhood bike works until I met Alex. You see, the people make the program. Neighborhood bike works is just a name, maybe just an acronym to you. To me, it's people. People like Alex. Alex taught me bike mechanics. Alex knew his craft. Alex believed in me. He told me I could be an excellent bike mechanic. And so I believe in myself. The people make the program. Then along came Mustafa. Mustafa knows his stuff, bikes like you expect, but also operations, management, and leadership. Not only did he teach me to be a better mechanic, but he also taught me how to teach you. He gave me an opportunity and I took it. Now I volunteer my time to help young people at the bike shop because I know the people make the program. And like I learned from Mustafa, leadership is about showing up. What Alex and Mustafa did for me, I can do for others. Now I wish to start my own bike business. I want to teach kids how to ride safely through traffic. I want them to, I want to teach them to be more independent through accessible transportation. I want them to feel that moment we all know when you're riding down a hill on a bike with the wind in your hair and the world stands still. I want to be like Mustafa and Alex because the people make the program. And I can be one of those people. The cycle repeats. Their impact grows bigger and so does mine. We all benefit. So good luck with your raffle. Keep doing what you're doing because you too are the people who make the program. We each contribute in our own ways. Now I can't repay the gifts Neighborhood Bike Works given me, but I can leave you with two words that I learned at Neighborhood Bike Works that you can use anytime when the world gets you down. Start pedaling. Thank you, Keanu. Next up, my son, Isan. All right, uh, er, all right. So when I first went into Neighborhood Bike Works, I thought it was really boring. That's what I saw, that's what I mainly saw in week one. Then we start right, we start riding around like uh, other places, such as the art museum, the one with the Rocky statue. Have you ever ran up those steps? Well, if you haven't, I wouldn't really recommend it because they would take literally forever to wake up, to walk up. Still, the art museum was pretty fun. It was good. Then we have lunch. It was really, it was really fun. Then we mostly we rolled down Martin Luther King Drive. That that was somewhat fun because there was like a big street and hill, and if you glide down it, it could be really fun. Have you ever ridden a bike in a car past you? Well, I ride at like, like medium pace, so that happens to me a lot. It could be a bit scary, but which is why we have MBW because I learned to ride safer, faster, and more comfortable. Good. That makes me feel good because of the fact I will most likely use this in the future. And who told me all that? My dad. He knows everything about bikes. Safety, repairs, focusing on wild driving. In fact, he even built my mom's bike from scratch. He taught me a few things everyone should hear once in a while. It's okay to fall. Do not be scared to fall. And when you fall, just get back on the bike and try again. That's my dad. That's my story. And that's why I like MBW. Thanks, thanks for all you do for us. Have a Those are great stories, right? Talk about impact. MVW has been doing this for 25 years. Think of how many stories like that are out there and the ripple effect that this organization has on the community and the youth that walk through our doors. One cool thing about these speeches is that we had two award-winning Toastmaster International members who helped Keanu and Isane find their voices for their speeches, help to guide them, coach them in delivery and speech edits. Essentially, these two got a mini masterclass in public speaking while getting ready for this fundraiser. But there's someone who can tell you about this better than myself. I'd like to introduce Matt Dever. Matt is an engineering manager at Cerner Corporation whose passion is public speaking and helping others find their voice. Matt won multiple Toastmaster International competitions 
and has mentored many burgeoning public speakers. Matt would like to talk to you about his experience working with Keanu and Ethan. So without further ado, Matt Dever. My name is Matt Dever and I'm an introvert. As a kid, I spoke less than a monk. My parents always told me, at least the monks talk to other monks. I just talk to myself in my head. That's it. Now, as an adult, I made a big change. I became an engineer. As an engineer, when your phone breaks down, I can tell you why. These were baby steps in my communication journey. But then 10 years later, my company Siemens asked me to manage a dozen teams in the US, India, and Europe. Why? Why would they ask me to lead so many people? Well, I still think they just volunteered me as tribute. Most engineers prefer anyone else talking to the whole team. But really, two things changed my life, helped me improve my communication skills, and led to that opportunity. First, I was given the chance to teach karate at the Upper Darby Boxing and Kickboxing Gym when I was just 14. Now, we were lower middle class as a family. We couldn't afford to pay the karate bill. So even though I didn't want to talk to one person for one minute, I learned to speak to dozens of people for an hour. And they were all staring at me. This shy, scrawny 14-year-old boy. But I learned some karate moves. So at least I had something to talk about. And really, we couldn't pay that bill. So I had no choice. The second experience that changed my life is I met a man named Alex Laws. Alex is a technical writer. They write those manuals no one reads. But really, Alex is a creative master. He's the heart and soul behind our Siemens Cerner Toastmasters Club in Melbourne. Now, Toastmasters sounds like a place where everyone gets drunk in honor of themselves. And sometimes we do, but really, so does every good club. Think about it. One day at Toastmasters, I read a speech with my head down. I thought it sounded awful. But afterward, Alex tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, you should use that speech in a competition. What? I won that competition against a professional speaking consultant. And I won the next one, and the next one, and the next one, because Alex let me download part of his brain. Now, 10 years later, I'm managing other people in speaking and leadership. Now, that's my story. You learn a skill, you teach others, you level up your life. Now, one of my mentees is Oleg Ivanov, Jesse's husband. He's managing the controls tonight. Oleg asked me to mentor Isan and Keanu, and I immediately said yes, because I heard about NBW, and it reminded me of the Upper Darby Boxing Gym where I trained. And because you don't say no to Oleg. If you ever meet him, you'll understand. Now, because of that, a few weeks ago, I met three new people. First, he's saying, I was surprised with how quickly and clearly he described what he wanted to talk about. From his boredom of the beginning of a new program, to his joy of riding a bike around the museum, to the story of him and his father. This was a depth of clarity from a young man you don't see often. Second, Keanu. When I read Keanu's first draft of the speech, I thought, wow, I don't often see such gratitude and high hopes in young people's hearts. From his honesty and joy and appreciation, talking about Alex and Mustafa and many others we didn't hear about, to his dreams of owning his own business and helping others, to his love of the arts and film, Keanu has a story we can all get into. And finally, there's Mustafa. We connected immediately. He was a top boxer in Philadelphia, and we probably met a dozen times at the Upper Darby Boxing Gym, and we didn't even know it. What it stood out to me about Mustafa is he's a role model. 
be someone you want your kids to emulate and listen to. You see that in the way he talks, his discipline, and his big heart for helping others. Now, we all have stories. You have a story. I have a story. Tonight, we heard Keanu and Isang's story. We heard the beginning of how they're leveling up through MBW. Programs like this change your life. Mentors like Mustafa change your life. Often you don't see that impact until years later. I've lived that story, but what about you? Have you had a program, a mentor, someone who changed your life? If you do, I bet you'll never forget that experience. Those people, because where would we be without them? Thank you for what you're doing with this program. You're giving Keanu, Hussein, and many others the opportunity to change their trajectory. We all have stories. I love stories. And I love places like MBW. They make for a better story because they lead to a better life. Back to you. Thank you, Matt, uh, for sharing your experience with us and for sharing your knowledge and expertise with Keanu and Usain. We are always seeking to provide our youth with opportunities to gain life and job training skills that will help them throughout their lives. No matter what you choose to do, public speaking will always be an asset. This was an amazing opportunity for MBW and for these youth. Take a look at our matching gift. It looks like we're already up to $1,715. That's pretty awesome. We're almost halfway there. Let's keep this going. There's still plenty of time to give. At our core, we teach youth how to fix bikes. We give them the chances to earn bikes and to explore new places outdoor by bike. Even during a global pandemic, we still made an impact. During the most stringent restrictions, we were bringing programming to our youth remotely with our weekly solo biking scavenger hunt. We moved our virtual, our, our, we moved our leadership and advanced mechanics class online. And we even added a hip hop line dancing class to keep our kids moving. Over the summer, we moved our repair stand to a nearby park and we offered summer programming completely outdoors. We were still able to ride 2,872 miles with our youth. Our youth earned 141 bikes and 16 youth earned a paycheck during a global pandemic. 89% of our youth feel more confident riding their bikes. Just look at Isan's story. 89% of our youth feel that MBW classes help them in their lives. And 88% of our youth plan to ride more because of MBW. But the best way to show you what MBW does is to take you in our bike shop and let you see our programming in action. This video is from our current two, two sessions of Earn a Bike. These youth have selected a donated bike from our stock. They are learning to fix and maintain that bike. We're teaching them bike safety. And when they complete the program, they will have earned their bike. It's theirs to keep. Then they're eligible for a host of other MBW programs. So sit back relax and enjoy earn a bike.
One of the interesting things about this video is that Youth Council helped me make it. A few weeks ago, Mustafa shared a rough cut of the video in a Youth Council meeting. Who better to know what cool is than the, the trend makers themselves, right? They like the footage, they like the beat of the track that I had selected, but they felt the lyrics didn't quite fit their idea of what MBW is. So I found an instrumental version and you know what? It was better. Throughout my own career, I have learned a very valuable lesson. Trust your experts. The youth are our experts. So I did that and it made the video even stronger. At MBW, our youth have a voice. With your help, we can reach even more youth. And it looks like we're almost to our goal. We're at $4,465. You guys are so generous. Thank you all, but there's still time to give. But youth programs is not the only thing that we do. We also have adult programming. Mel's Community Bike Shop, more commonly known as Bike Church, is our DIY community bike shop. In Bike Church, our patrons can work independently using our tools and bike stands or utilize one of our facilitators to help them learn new skills and keep their bikes road ready or refurbish and rebuild a used bike, all at a very reasonable price. With people sharing tools and working closely side by side, this was the most complex part of our programming to continue during COVID-19. We temporarily shut down Bike Church, but quickly started offering 15 minute fixes in the style of a traditional bike shop. Even though we couldn't provide all the services that we normally would to our community, we wanted to offer some way to help. Then we piloted an outdoor version of Bike Church in the fall, using all the, the using all the information that we learned during summer youth programming that we took outdoors and plan to offer that again in the spring, but with an exciting addition. We are currently in the process of applying for a permit to install a permanent outdoor repair stand outside our bike shop in NBW Yellow, of course. This will allow anyone access to essential bike tools and a repair stand 24 hours a day. There will be a plaque with a QR code that links to an MBW YouTube channel with helpful how-to videos folks can use when mechanics are not in our shop to assist them. We are dedicating this bike stand to Will Lindsay. This past July, Will Lindsay was tra tragically struck and killed while cycling in Philadelphia both making the streets safer for cyclists and getting everyone on the bike were two things that I understand were important to Will. MBW was humbled to be included in a memorial fund that was organized for Will. And we are excited to honor Will's memory by using some of the generous funding for this valuable asset for the biking community. We also added a new program at the beginning of the pandemic. Bikes for Neighbors matches essential workers and guardians of our youth graduates with free bikes. We received a lot of media attention for the program and word spread quickly. We knew we were providing a valuable asset during an unprecedented time when being able to bike instead of use public transit could reduce everyone's risk. There was a global bike shortage and we were sitting on a stock of hundreds of bikes. We knew we could help. We knew these bikes were needed. What we didn't realize was the powerful stories that would come out of that program. Neighborhood Bike Works was commissioned by NACTO, that's the National Association of City Transportation Officials, to produce a short video highlighting the Bikes for Neighbors program for their Better Bike Share and Shared Micro Mobility Roundtable at their annual national conference. I would like to share that video with you all now, along with some video testimonials from three of our Bikes for Neighbors recipients. Lanisha, Anne, and Susan can tell you in their own words the kind of effect that these bikes have had on their lives. Typically, Neighborhood Bike Works runs youth bike programs, and we run Philadelphia's only DIY community bike shop. 
A lot of the programming that we normally do gathers people and once the pandemic hit, we could no longer do that safely. So we had to pivot and figure out how we could serve our mission while still keeping safe. We came up with this Bikes for Neighbors program where we were providing bicycles to essential workers and also to parents and guardians of our youth graduates. Bikes are a natural social distancing tool. We have a large stock of bikes and we knew we would be able to help. We couldn't solve the problem, but we could certainly help. When we launched Bikes for Neighbors, we thought we might get 100 requests for bikes. Uh, it became a clear very quickly that there was a great need. We've had 520 requests to date for, for bicycles, and we've already given out 50 bikes. We're pacing to give seven to 10 bikes out a week. At the heart of Neighborhood Bike Works mission is equitable access to biking and bicycling. Typically we do that through our DIY community shop, adult repair classes, and our youth programming. But during the pandemic, we are still providing equitable access through the Bikes for Neighbors program. So we, we receive donated bikes every year, hundreds and hundreds of bikes throughout the year. And we actually saw an, an uptick in both the quality of donations that we were getting during the pandemic and, and the number uh, on donation days. So I think folks are cleaning out their spaces, hearing about the program, uh, and wanting to contribute bikes so that we can get them back out on the road. There is a significant cost to undertaking an initiative like this. 50% uh, of the revenue of sales in our bike shop happens between April and June, and that's exactly when the pandemic hit. One of the, the key things that we provide to the youth that go through our programming are paid job opportunities. So we're looking at models where our youth who have gained the mechanic skills through our youth programming can work on these bikes and then put these bikes out into their own community. We had such an overwhelming response and obviously hit on such a need with this program that we're looking at ways that we can incorporate this even past the pandemic. Hello from Penn's Landing. I'm just um, going to show you my bicycle. So this is my bicycle. I ride it every day. And uh, the story behind this is I wouldn't have this bicycle if it weren't for the uh, people that had a bicycle, giving away the bicycles for essential workers. Uh, Jessica was part of that. And I just want to thank the sponsors who sponsor this event to give us essential workers bicycles so we can get around from point A to point B. It was very difficult during the pandemic. Um, plus, my bike was taken by, I guess, someone else who needed a bicycle. So when they announced to me from an email that I was receiving a bicycle, I was, uh, I can't explain how grateful. And the, uh, the appearance of the bike was... They asked, what kind of bike do you want? Mountain tires, a comfortable seat, and a basket. And this is what I got. It's a good bike. It's so sturdy. It has a headlight when you're pedaling. The headlight goes on. Nice iron basket. And then also, in addition to the Headlight, you have a running light on the back. Excellent seat. Drum brakes. I couldn't ask for anything better. I can't tell you how grateful I am to have this bicycle. And here we are. I want to give a special shout out to Neighborhood Bike Works for my amazing bike. Since receiving the bike, it has been very beneficial as I've been trying to become more heart healthy and I'm on a weight loss journey. 
I'm super excited to say that I've already lost 10 to 11 pounds. So I am very, very grateful that you chose me uh, to be one of the persons to receive this amazing bike. Again, thank you for my bike. Hi everybody, I'm Ann Schumann and I'm a veterinary technician taking care of laboratory animals on the University of Pennsylvania campus. We have we worked all through the pandemic and never, never stop because the research animals need care seven days a week. And I, I can't tell you how lovely it was when Neighborhood Bike Works gave me a bicycle. It was the one thing that lifted my spirits through this entire thing. Um, people would give us cards and say thank you, but oh, that bicycle. I love that bicycle. Um, as soon as I got it, I took it for took it on rides, and I I treat it like a pet. I actually do. I take it all the way up into my apartment because I'm worried something will happen. But um, it's really been lovely, and I can't thank Neighborhood Bike Works enough for doing this wonderful thing for essential workers. Thank you to Lanesha, Susan, and Anne for sharing those stories. We were blown away by the public response to Bikes for Neighbors. Independence Blue Cross is sponsoring Bikes for Neighbors, and we are seeking more corporate sponsorship to expand the program past the pandemic. Your donations help to get us even more essential workers on free bikes. The Bikes for Neighbors numbers are really striking. Some of those statistics are here. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have had 549 requests for bikes through the Bikes for Neighbors program, and we have distributed 119 bikes so far. We had a couple more go out the doors just this week. 45% of our recipients are healthcare workers and 20% are grocery store workers, all frontline folks who are helping to keep everyone safe during this pandemic. For $150, we can get an essential worker on a refurbished bike and help keep them safer and by extension, our community safer from COVID-19. And I have more exciting news. We have reached our goal. This is amazing. Thank you to everyone here tonight. We are over the $6,000 mark. You have helped us surpass the benchmark that we say set for this evening and secure our $5,000 matching gift. I wanted to say a few more special thank yous, especially to Isane, Keanu, and Matt Dever for speaking tonight, to Oleg for helping with all the tech support that makes tonight's event possible, to our board of directors, and especially to our development committee, Jamie Weller, Mitch Arch, and Patty Bakley, who all helped bring tonight's event to life. And of course, thank you to all of you for helping us meet our goal. Your support is crucial to NBW, and we are so grateful for your contribution. Thank you again to our prize sponsors and to our event sponsors, Cozen O'Connor and Loretta Witt, Homes of Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services, Fox and Roach. Subscribe to our YouTube channel below and receive updates about upcoming events. The silent auction will end at 8 p.m. tonight, so get your final bids in. But if you're not a winner, there's still a chance to win something. Our bike raffles run through the weekend, so purchase some chances while you still can. Winners will be announced Monday. Enjoy your evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you from everyone at Neighborhood Bike Works. I will leave you with this short video from another Earn a Bike class. This video was entirely student shot, produced, and edited by a student from a special session of Earn a Bike that we offered to Quadrat Academy. Thank you again.